I've come to where I am based on the hard work and the decisions I've made. I wouldn't consider myself like a hugely gifted athlete physically. I don't think I ever grew up going, oh, I'm an amazing athlete, I'm awesome at every single sport. It was the hard work that got me here. I do think I'm gonna be the best in the world one day. And that's a beautiful yes. clearance. Walking into the Olympic Stadium for that final was, it was weird. It just didn't seem like it was happening. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd seen so many Olympic finals when I was growing up, and not just in the high jump, but you know, every event, and to be a part of one just, just felt kind of, it just didn't feel like it should be happening. Jump, the most important jump of his young career. And the boy who grew up in Auckland that went through Auckland Grammar School deliver on the big stage. He can! And the Kiwi survives for one more round! We've never had a high jumper who's qualified for a global final. So that was just an absolutely huge achievement. And so for Hamish to perform, and under pressure as well, third round attempts at, at 28 and again at 31, to get through that, that was more of an achievement than any placing. Honestly, going into Tokyo, my big thing was just enjoying the experience. Two competitions before Tokyo, I no heighted which is pretty much the worst thing you can do as an athlete. It essentially means that on my starting height, I had three attempts and I missed all of them. I think I started like 2.15, which was lower than the starting height was gonna be at Tokyo. For about 10 days, I, you know, I couldn't sleep properly. I was staying awake at night being like, have I forgotten how to jump? So I think, if anything, going into qualifying, I was just hoping I was gonna make starting height. After that time, you know, the pressure was off. I went into that final just being like, I'm just so excited to, to have another opportunity to jump and, and feel good jumping, because at that time I was in a really good place. I was just enjoying it. We train here at Christchurch Boys High School, just sort of in the, the corner of their field, and we don't even have a full track. We've got two shipping containers that's got our gear in it. And it can change within a week. I mean, we can go from, from here, which is very low key, to a stadium full of 60,000 people. I don't think I've fully processed the bronze. Hamish Kerr. I will probably look back on it after my career and realise how significant it was as a milestone. We've gone from relatively no competition over these last few years to making a final in Olympics, getting a, a global medal at the first major after that, and even now being a 231 high jumper. I know there's a lot more there. I feel that he has the ability to perhaps be a two metre 40 jumper and I think he's third or fourth ranked in the Commonwealth so there's some expectation now and so it's dealing with that expectation. I embrace it, I think that I've earned it. Added pressure on me as an athlete is, has only been brought about by my success and my performances. If I didn't want that pressure, maybe I shouldn't have jumped so well. <laughs> I mean, it's, it just comes with the territory but although I say I want to be the best and, and we've got all these amazing goals, Realistically, they're still two, three year plans. And so it's sort of just trying to make the most of the opportunities we get, but also understand that it might not come right now. It might come right now, but also might not, and just being okay with that. I think probably the big thing for me is that if I'm, if I'm dreaming about high jump and I kind of can't switch off from that in the sort of week leading up to the, the event, I know I'm, I'm pretty ready to go. 